um, from frenzy to flow, how to live a radiantly fulfilling life. So that's what I want to spend the next uh, minute here sharing with you um, these insights. So the first is, why are we in frenzy? Why are we in frenzy to begin with, right? And there's obviously not just one answer for this. There's, there's numerous reasons, starting with we've been conditioned this way. As a society, we've been conditioned to be go-getters, right? To be ambitious, to achieve things and get things done. And in and of itself, um, being uh, accomplished and motivated and having dreams and visions is, is not a bad thing, but we've really bought into this pace of society where things just don't turn off. And, you know, maybe those moments when our head is on the pillow and the light is out, but otherwise, once we're up and awake, we have been conditioned to be on like, you know, almost 20 hours a day or 18 hours a day conditioned to be in that go mode, which, um, which isn't natural. It is truly not natural to be in that much activity. And so another part of that is, and I touched on this briefly, is that so many of us, again, have been conditioned to look externally for fulfillment. And that fulfillment comes from the job, it comes from the fancy house, it comes from the cars or the vacations or the circle that we run in. And all of those things can create beautiful moments and memories and, and pieces of fulfillment. But um, it's, it's not, again, how we're designed. So we can get ourselves in this frenzy of just always trying to grasp for that fulfillment in something that's not meant to be truly fulfilling um, at, a, at a soul level for ourselves. And um, one of the other pieces of this conditioning is that we've been trained to, to live in our head. And I think I talked about this briefly. And we have been just disconnected then for the most part, and everybody's on a different scale. So I, I, I don't want to, um, again, take what resonates with you. I'm not saying people are doing anything wrong. I know for me, I was so deeply disconnected from my intuition. And as a result, I was constant, I was in my head and I was, because I wasn't using the inner wisdom, I was doubting my decisions. I was frequently uh, changing my mind, redoing things redoing a decision I had made. And it was, I just felt like I was grasping for things. So all of that creates a sense of frenzy, right? Um, also this concept of, you know, trying to be all things to all people. And we, as women, we wear a lot of hats, right? We, we might be the mother, the spouse, the partner, the career woman, the friend, the family member, the vacation planner, the housekeeper, what, whatever we, you know, each one of us probably has, you know, six to 16 different hats that we wear. And, and, and often that one hat of self is missing. And um, I know I talked about this, right? The, how the cup, we don't view self-care. We don't view taking care of ourselves the same way as we do all those other roles. And so if we're never pausing to fill our cup, what's happening? We're, we're constantly in that fight or flight mode, that burnout, on the edge of burnout. And I know somebody mentioned it, like I'm young, I'm 38, right? And I don't want to burn out. So um, I, I, I get that and I stand with you to not burn out. But the reality is, again, this culture that we're living in, and another element is that um, this whole thing of like proving ourselves. Now I know you gals are in a really male dominated um, business and there may be a part of you that feels like I have to prove myself and prove I'm worthy to be here, prove I'm successful. And that type of perspective is really coming from a place of lack versus from a place of owning your worthiness. And anytime we're, we're coming from a place of lack, it sets us up for uh, an anxiety type of energy um, that, that affects everything that we do, right? So we, we maybe go, um, our boundaries, we talked about this briefly, like we don't have any boundaries as far as when we say no, we're always on, we're always you know, 
taking up that next project, even if it means we're sacrificing sleep or we're missing our workout or, or whatever the case might be. So these, all these little things add up to this overwhelming, over um, arching experience of anxiety and stress and just like feeling out of control, out of control. So those are some of the core things that I've experienced that I've seen from my clients on reasons why, whoops, excuse me here, on reasons why, sorry, I didn't have that on uh, do not disturb, that we have, um, that we're in this place of frenzy, right? So let me make sure I didn't miss anything. And um, yeah, so that's, okay, that's good. So what can we do then as women to step into flow? And the first thing we have to be willing to do is get off the treadmill. And everybody's treadmill looks different and everybody can run at a different pace. But in order to shift things, we need to be willing first to pause, to evaluate our lives, evaluate what's working, what's not working, what am I willing to, um, what fuels me and what what gives me energy and excitement and what drains me and to to really be honest with ourselves on where we each individually are again no one size fits all here it's based on everybody's different energy and preferences and um, design you each have your own unique design so be, but really first being able to take um pause to, to look at it. And then the next thing is to really put a stake in the ground. And I have, I'm going to get it real quick. Hold on. I used this yesterday, this sword, like let's put the sword down about let's, you know, we feel like we have to slay the day and we're constantly fighting the dragon or you know, what, whatever is lurking around the corner, let's put this, put it down and, and at, like use it as a stake in the ground to take a stand for our highest fulfillment. And what that looks like is that we are taking a stand for who we uniquely are, our, our bigger version of ourselves beyond our careers, beyond who we are as women, in our families, and our relationships, but who we are as a unique divine being, each here to experience different things based on our heart, based on our soul, based on our purpose. And so we, um, to get into flow, it, it requires us to draw that stake in the ground for our higher self, for our, that body, mind, and spirit, right? We're more than just this physical body going through the day-to-day, -day, um, living a life and then dying one day. It's, th there's so many more things for us to experience um, when we connect in with and, and take a stand for our, our deeper purpose and our, our higher selves. So um, also to get into flow, what's required is to really get conscious and aware of the beliefs and the habits that are creating the stress and anxiety in the first place. And a lot of that does end up linking back to patterns we've learned when we were little. Um, one of my big ones was I'm too much and I was a dreamer and I always wanted something to do something to, you know, I was creative and, and energetic and I was one of six kids. And so, I, you know, I was kind of quieted down and taught, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. And so I, you know, came to learn or believe that my ideas um, were selfish. They weren't, um, they were sometimes crazy. I got that messaging. And so I had to like rewire a lot of those um, rewire new to new beliefs about myself. So I, those old ones, let those old ones die off and see, it was really my dad's conditioning and how he was showing up with me. It had nothing to do with my worth and my capabilities and my purpose. So, so to get into that flow state, being willing to see where you, you are holding yourself back 
by you having these old beliefs and paradigms and conditioning that is keeping you in, in a box, so to speak. And then the last piece of that is really being willing to step into a whole new approach for how you live, lead, and achieve. And it's an approach that really is sourced from the inside out and using your unique gifts and talents and purpose and ideas. And again, your, your powers of self-worth and intuition and, and so much more to then step into how you live, lead and achieve. And that new approach is what I call radiant achievement, radiant achievement. And you all have a copy of the book where you can learn more about what that looks like. So being willing to shift in how we show up, and I know I talked about this at the very end last night, is that I truly believe, and you may have heard this, maybe, maybe you haven't, that women are here to change the world. And we have to take a stand for that higher vision and it has to start with a higher vision for our own lives. And then it's the lives of our family. And then it's the, it's the lives within the business community. And I'm not saying any of this is perfect, fun. Uh, it can be, or, or necessarily easy because we're, we're kind of trying to, we're turning that boat um, that's been like on a, a high speed course for a lot of years. So it is courageous to stay, take a stand for a new way. It is courageous to set boundaries where we haven't before, to use our voice to say, you know what, I have a different approach that actually is more aligned with the way I desire to live, what, whatever the case may be. So let's then, I wanna dive into what Radiant Achievement is. Again, you have the book, or we'll be getting the book soon if you don't have it now, but it is truly a new way to innovate how you live, how you lead, and you, how you achieve. And it is sourced from the inside, from your soul, from your higher self, from your intuition. And then it's nurtured by engaging your creativity, by engaging inspired action. And it is then you know, acted upon by that, those intuitive energies, which is the inspired action. Kind of missaid that a little bit, but it is, Again, we've taught, been taught so much more the outside coming in. Now we're going in, go to the out. And it's a more grounded, more um, trusting place to stand. It's a more peaceful place to stand. And it's all based on seven powers, which you'll learn about in the book. That, um, and these are, the, these are core powers that I used on my journey. Different people frame it different ways. As I mentioned yesterday, I, you know, my message is not the end all be all. It may resonate with you. And if it does, fantastic. You might have other teachers you've used that resonate and this might inspire you to go back to the, that work. But it, it, regardless of which, however we frame it, it truly is taking a stand to create with more joy and grace and ease and trust and by engaging each of these inner powers, that is how you start to live your life. So, <clears throat> which leads to the next, the next aspect of what I want to share is then what becomes possible for women, for you, for me, when we adopt this new approach to living, leading, and achieving. And what becomes possible, I want to say, is everything. Everything that you authentically and wholeheartedly desire in your life can come to life from this new approach. And I call it a radiant life turned on. And I don't, you know, talk, talk about turned on, like a lot of people might, especially men might think of turned on, but it's, it's a turned on life or where you turn on your radiant life is where you look forward to each day where you are in gratitude for who you are being, for the choices that you are making, for what you're learning and how you're growing, for how you're impacting people. And all of those, um, it, it's, it's a, a deep alignment with your authentic self and your authentic um, ideas and desires and purpose. 
So the excitement is part of it, but it's not perfection. And I, and I, you know, I'm a very positive person and I can maybe come across that um, it's fluff. This isn't fluff. Like I have done and I continue to do um, work to see where I am still in showing up in a limiting belief or where I am um, not, you know, fully stepping, stepping in maybe because of some fear, like the big rocks, I want to say, I've, I feel like I've done a lot of the work with the big rocks, but there's still refinement to go. So it's not perfection. Um, it's not a problem free life. Um, the, the world is still going to go on spinning the way it is. And at the same time, when you engage your powers of radiant achievement, you show up differently in those situations. You're more grounded, you're more trust in trust, you're more empowered. And so how others are interacting and responding to you shifts, not because they've changed, but because you've changed in how you're showing up. And, and I've had people, um, in networking meetings and they, they would come up to me and say, wow, you sound different. You look different. And, and it has truly been because I've gotten more and more in alignment with my, what's, what's meaningful to me in my life. And I've taken a stand to live that way to the best of my ability every day. So that's possible for you. Um, so there's, there's also internal and external changes that you can, uh, that you will experience. One of the big ones is this just beautiful, authentic self-love for yourself. And uh, there's some great exercises in the ritual chapter where I talk about, and it's sprinkled in the book, I talk about the self-love journey. And when we just truly uh, do some of these practices and really connect and honestly and authentically love ourselves, it changes how we show up in the world and how we relate to other people. So you feel your worthiness, you engage your intuition, you and you actually act on it with confidence. <clears throat> Instead of doubting yourself and, and saying, which this was me, you know, I'm not sure this is true or right, or maybe I'm maybe I'm misreading things. Uh, I I over time let go of all of that self-doubt and I little by little just started honoring what was coming to me and I'm going to just play it out and see what happens, play it out and see what happens. Our intuition is never wrong, never wrong. And trusting that, loving yourself and trusting your intuition are two of the biggest gifts that you can give to yourself. Um, and so as a result of that, you experience joy in the journey, you experience joy in the day. And so even when a problem, a problem comes up, right, that we're conditioned to think is, oh my gosh, this is bad. A problem is nothing more than an opportunity for you to grow, an opportunity for you to step into a higher version of yourself and to shed something that is no longer working. Like when we hit ourselves against, you know, hitting our head against the wall and we're, we keep repeating the same thing and, and not looking at what it is, we're, we're staying stuck in a cycle, right? So when we start to look at, step back from it and like figure out why do I want to hit my head in the wall or what's going on here, we can, we can learn to let go of that thing that is not serving us. And that's what this, it's like this constant up-leveling of acknowledging the problems, the stuck points, the obstacles, learning from it, and then, you know, up-leveling. So it, you create this beautiful cycle for yourself. And um, then, yeah, again, it's you are just really, when you have that alignment with yourself, you feel like anything is possible. And there's gratitude, uh, communications better, every, oh, so many things are better. So externally, what you can expect are better relationships with your peers, with your bosses, with your family members. Um, you have stronger and more effective communication. You can speak your truth without a lot of drama around it. Um, and that allows other people to speak their truth, um, setting healthy boundaries. Your energy is going to shift and you will see that you're not feeling overwhelmed and drained all the time. And that is because when we are living in alignment, flow state takes, no, how, how much energy does it take to flow? Very little, but if we keep pushing and bumping up against rocks, 
that's when our energy gets drained. So you learn about that. And you, you externally, you also get to see your dreams and desires come to life, but come to life from a place of flow and grace versus you feeling like you have to force something to happen or that you have to outperform or outprove yourself to be, to be worthy of whatever it is you desire. So then the, the last thing I want to uh, wrap up with is, uh, is this, you know, again, this isn't fluff. It is a truly courageous decision when you decide to live in alignment with who you truly are and what's really truly important to you and what vision it is that you have for your life. And um, it's like, again, you drawing that line in the sand or putting that stake in the ground for your highest fulfillment. So how do I support women in doing that? Um, that's, that's, that's exactly what it, I do as in my work, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or in a group, is I help women to reclaim their authentic self-worth. I help them to help you know, women like you to get out of living in your head and really reconnect with all of you, with your intuition and your inner wisdom. Um, I help you to rewire, help women to rewire their brain. And uh, I've done a lot of work in this myself to, to see and understand um, our, our um, conditioning in action, right? The beliefs and the thoughts and how that shows up in our life. So I help to um, actually rewire your brain. And then another big thing, and I didn't talk too much about it before, but Radiant achievement is is really this beautiful synergy of of um, there's the feminine energies which are more of the receiving and the intuition and the creativity and then there's the masculine energies which are more the action oriented. We need both, and I'm not saying that strategic achievement wholeheartedly needs to be thrown out. There are, I do write plans. I do have action lists. I do follow a launch plan when I'm launching a new product, product or program. And, and I also start with that inside approach, right? With really connecting and getting, getting clear on what my intuition is telling me and taking inspired action. So it's a beautiful blend. And so I help women to, to, figure out for themselves what that looks like. Again, everybody is different and unique and you might not do it the same way the next person does. So it's helping you get clarity for yourself. And then um, that, that receptivity mode, which again, we're so good at doing, like so many women, and again, I'll, I'll raise my hand here. I have no problem doing stuff. I have problem listening. I have problem receiving. I have problem with had problems with my intuition. So, so it's almost like we only have one half of the equation and I help women to build up. So both sides of that equation are strong, which then carries you forward with um, so much more grace and ease. And a lot of it is like, wh what do I even desire in my life? Like, what's important to me? What do I enjoy doing? We've become so disconnected from that, that it's almost like we, we really need to get to know ourselves all over again, like reintroduce. Hi, I'm Christine Howard. And here's, here's who I am, right? So we, I spend time um, with women, helping them reconnect with themselves and to get clarity on what it is that is important to them. So that's just a little tidbit. I wanted to, again, share a little bit more about um, who I am and what I do. You heard a bit about my story in the beginning. And um, I am, I'm here, I, I welcome any interest in, if you wanna jump on a discovery call and or um, a mini session just to t understand you know, what's going on for you. I'm happy to do that too. And grateful to Lynn for creating this platform for me to step into with you and share um, my book and some of these other deeper nuggets on what it's, what it's truly, uh, what is truly possible for you to, how you can get out of frenzy, get into flow and live your version of a radiantly fulfilling life. That is my wish for you today and always. 
And again, thank you for being here and for um, being open to listen and learn um, and see what, what new things resonate for you. There are no coincidences. You're watching this for a reason. And I, I would love to hear what most resonates with you. What's your key takeaways? And um, would love to uh, always explore any way that um, I can support you in bringing your vision to life. Okay, ladies, thank you. Bye for now.